Okay, so this is Steve's in and out um, selection game that uh, for myself, I wanted to do this one in particular because when I first did it, I actually, um, I like to challenge myself and try it out the bat. So I got negative five, I started with the T-charts. And then once I learned you're kind of supposed to do a diagram first, and then the T-charts, I was able to get a perfect score on the next um, try. So um, that's a little bit lower down, Steve. So there's, um, as you see, I kind of explained myself and I, I knew I wasn't getting the correct answer, but I just didn't know why I couldn't figure out the correct answer. But if you go further down also to the second page, um, it shows like as I went through the game a little bit more, um, the second time around, I, I was able to see like exactly how my, I used the chain and how it linked up. So um, this one's a little bit written on. So I do have a cleaner version on the third page just to go through. Um, this game is about a legislator who's voting on bills. So as of course, you wanna start off by writing or reading your question to find out exactly what you have going on. So she's voting on the bills, defense, environment, free trade, gun control, healthcare, immigration, and judicial uh, activism. So I always write the, my variables down to the side, how many they are on top. And I also kind of circle one that, well, later on you're gonna find out doesn't have that many restrictions based on the rules. So um, I went through the rules. The first one is she votes for gun control only if she votes for against environment. So G is in if E is out. And then you also wanna put your contrapositive there as well. Um, number two, unless she votes against the, the JA bill, she will vote for the immigration bill. So this one, it, it, it kind of tripped me up a little bit, but then um, I remembered what you're supposed to do when you see unless, which is use if not, and then I guess if not with against also was like a double negative. So I was able to say with J, then I. And so then that was my second rule. And then for E, um, she will vote for either the environmental bill or the J, the J bill or both. So I have that there. And then for four, which was also kind of a tricky one. She votes for the gun control bill. Um, if she votes or offer both the healthcare bill and the defense bill. So you had to include both of those here. Um, and for the contrapositive that, that of course means that you have either or or both. So coming down to that, um, number one, when I'm going through the answer choices, oh, actually after I made those rules, I then went and did my, my change. So I linked the rules together by knowing that I needed to, I had obviously a lot of positives on one side, a lot of negatives on the other. So I have, I made those two chains. Um, following that, I was able to then go to the first question, the orientation question. Ayan, if I could interrupt you for one second, uh, could you share a bit more about how you created these chains? and like any potential struggles you might've had along the way. Cause I know a lot of folks have trouble even simply diagramming the rules in this game and then combining them together could be a bit tricky. And so could you talk a bit about just how you created the chains, what went into making them and how you interpret them? Like if you were to okay. read them from left to right and maybe what are some valid inferences, what are some invalid inferences? Okay, certainly. Um, so how I initially started was I went with uh, my first rule, G and E. So I put one as the G in and one with G out. And then from there, I knew that um, from rule number four, G just kind of stood out because it was a weird thing. So I added the, the H and the D up top on, number, on my first uh, chain. And then for um, the second chain, I knew that that meant that if G is out, then it was gonna be um, H or D. And I do a dotted line to indicate that um, scenario. And same thing for um, if I then J, I added that to the chain because I know that, actually I didn't figure out until the third rule that E, how E and J were connected. So like when you see number two, the second rule, I kind of had to wait a moment. I just wrote that rule when the contrapositive, but then when I got to the third rule, I did recognize that E, and J were connected. And then um, that allowed me to connect J to the E to the G chain that I have originally. So then it went from this first chain, it went from G in, then E was out, and then J was in, and which then led to I being in as well. 
And I, so since I had that complete positive chain, I was able to do a um, complete negative chain as my second scenario. Um, and that's after that point, I did start answer or I did go down to the answer choices at the, um, after that. Is there any questions about the chain and how, I, how else I was able to come to that? Okay, awesome. Also, if we want to move on into the orientation question, it it is a she's asking or the or Steve's asking which one of the following could be a complete and accurate list of the bills that the legislator votes against. Um, how I was able to approach this question was um, th I went to the negative chain because she's voting against them. I'm thinking against negative. Which one of these has the most? Um, most bills voted against. So for me, obviously, number two stood out. So I went there and I was able to then use my rules to eliminate the answer choices. So for A, it she votes, it says votes against the both uh, the defense bill and the gun control bill. That's that couldn't be correct because it violates number four. It has the H and D. Um, for number, I mean, for B, it had, um, Let's see. Actually, I what what I do first is for number I would go down to my first rule and say which one has um, on the negative on the negative scenario. Excuse me. Looking at J, so now I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. One second. Okay, so down on B, um, looking at the rules. I'm sorry. So if G is in and E is out, I would go down and eliminate any one that had. GN. So for me, that first crossed out C. And then from there, I went to another rule, which was the J and I rule. And I was able to eliminate B. And then I went down to my next rule, three, E and J. And so I was able to eliminate D. Um, and A was left and I was able to eliminate as that as well from rule four in which left E as my orientation answer. Uh, following that, I, uh, for number two. Ayana, just before you, before you continue, I, I wanna, instead of simply going through like the di like question by question, since folks haven't had a chance to try the game itself, I wonder if they might get more out of it by having the chance, maybe not in this class, but in the future to try the game on their own and then they'll have more to, be able to understand context to understand the questions because here we just have the diagram pulled up we don't have the question pulled up simultaneously and i'd want them to have a chance to try it on their own and then benefit from what you've drawn here definitely i um have that accessible i'm sorry i didn't I, let's see here if you want to see it quickly but i know that there's other people that need to present so let me know if let's see here i pulled it up well, I, I think rather than simply going through the, the nuts and bolts of the problem itself, I think folks might benefit more from, and folks can feel free to chime in, to benefit from, because we see a lot of different diagrams here. Like you, we have three different pages. I'm wondering if you can talk through your, I'm just scrolling to show folks everything that you, that you did here in the process of coming to the very clean final version. And so I think it's really useful to see like the, the messy version, if I can call it that, where you're kind of figuring things out versus the cleanly organized result at the end where we have it broken down. You're explaining, okay, well, why A is out, why B is out, why C is out, which I think is really cool. And I would love for folks to do this. And then later they can look back and think, wait, why was C wrong? Why was A wrong? Why is E correct? And so to kind of show the before after, because I think of course, I would love for everybody to draw this final version on test day mm -hmm. itself. This is fantastic. But I also love that in a place like this, we can show folks that their messy initial versions are not the only versions that where you're kind of figuring things out in the moment. And so if you could talk about like, okay, like you have your initial rules and their contrapositives, then you link them together. Everything flows very smoothly here. Could you then contrast this with you grappling with the problem earlier in the process? Okay. Yeah. Let me try to think back because I actually did that game um, originally, probably it's near the the earlier part of your study plan. And then when I did, I did so poorly on it, I went back maybe about two or three days later after I'd watched the videos. And then I 
that was the second page that you see with the, um, the minus zero. So originally when I did it, I, I hadn't learned about doing the chains yet, diagramming as in, in chains. And so that I just thinking off the back of my head, I went with doing a T-chart thinking in and out game. Oh, I need to do T-chart. So I learned quickly that it's much better to um, connect your variables in a chain to see, to, it's, it's a different visual that you can see um, logically what can and cannot be in. And so um, that helped with that. But if you could go, um, if you wouldn't mind going to the first sheet, I may have some ideas of why. See, I can, you can see clearly um, on this one where rule number two uh, tripped me, it definitely tricked me. I didn't understand the unless, um, I guess, the understanding of how you can use unless is if not. And so I, 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 read, I wrote it down wrong. I wrote not G, if not G, then I. And so I, I later did, and you can see while using that rule throughout the game, I missed so many of the problems. Um, so figuring that out and learning that trick and um, it really did help. Let me see, I'm sorry, I was trying to read. Um, it really did help to learn that. And let's see here, what else? Um, if there was some, a specific question, I mean, even here when I was originally doing, I had, I remember listening to some of your podcasts and you said, just make sure you know why you're getting something wrong or why, you know, so I've been crossing out things if I knew they were wrong. Um, and so I did start that process, but they would, I would come to a point where I would be um, in between two questions and have to try to figure out why I didn't know it. And then I would get bogged down and just try to go to the next one. I do know that using, um, doing the, the local questions and the global questions first, it really does help. Like I've started, I've measured myself doing it without it and doing it with it. I definitely got better accuracy. So doing those if questions during, throughout the game first and then going to the which questions is beneficial. It has been beneficial for me. So I would recommend that. Um, and I did that in this game as well the second time around. Thank you so much for sharing that, Ayana. I think it's really useful for, for folks to see your process and your evolution here. So I love this three-page layout that you're willing to share, the before, the during, the after. That's fantastic. So I, a couple of things I want to call out. One is that you discovered, as we were just like, in relation to our previous class, you tried both ways, doing questions in order versus orientation, local, global. And in your case, you found that doing the local before the global was useful. Yes. Another thing you mentioned is that you just on your first initial read of the game, there was a mis you misread a rule involving the word unless. Unless, like I called out earlier, is a very tricky idea. It's a very tricky concept, not a clean conditional indicator. And so I think that's number two here, right? Like number two yes. here is that rule that is diagrammed incorrectly, and then it made everything go wrong. As you, you see, you got a minus five. I imagine that that might have played a role there. Exactly. And there's also, in this one, there's also, you didn't have the conditional chains here. But then correct. in version 2.0, you've got conditional chains. You now have the correct J arrow I, which is the correct interpretation of that rule. Things flowed more smoothly. This is maybe how a typical student's correct, accurate diagram might look for just for themselves. Like I imagine this, this is what you drew for yourself solving it and you got them all right. And that yes. third page is like the clean one to show the I've class. I've made it for you guys. For yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Fantastic. I love it. And just to address Hannah's question in the chat, maybe you could answer this, Ayana. How do you ID local versus global? What's the difference in those question types to you? Okay, for me, um, the indicator word for a, a local question is like if. So it kind of know, it's telling you exactly where something is, like you know what's going on. If this is happening, then you know what else must be true? Usually something like that. But, and then a global is like which one of these is so kind of a broader, um, I guess, perspective, like which, thinking of the word which, it, it, you have to eliminate more things usually with those questions. So if you wait for them, you may get the answer to them when, once you've done your local or if questions. Those diagrams generally uh, usually create a scenario that will answer the which questions, if that makes sense. Yeah, spot on, Ayana. Exactly. So local has the if. It gives you a specific local limitation. 
that what guides you in drawing a specific hypothetical scenario versus the general global, more open-ended in nature. There's certainly not a prephrase you could you could make, not even a guidance on a diagram you could do. It's just what in general must be true or cannot or could. Uh, I see Natalie wanted to chime in on this. Uh, Natalie, do you want to add something? Yeah, for me, the way I distinguish between lo local and global, global questions are mostly like, um, just the question saying which of this cannot be true or which of this can be true or which of this is most likely to be true versus uh, local is most giving an additional premise. So sometimes when you, when you do locals first, diagramming and uh, that might answer some of the global questions and it's easier to eliminate answers that way too. So that's uh, how I approach it. Awesome. Ayana, anything else you want to share about your general process here in creating these? Well, I mean, I really would just say um, I would recommend just trying to stay organized. If you do, um, if you if a question like kind of stumped you up and if you got it wrong, go back to it. Definitely. Even if you got it right. But if it confused for, even for a little bit, go back to it um, and just stay organized. Like definitely don't be afraid to get something wrong because you will learn from it later on. And that's kind of what I've, how I've been approaching this. So that's it. And thank you, Steve, for, uh, you know, giving us the chance to do this. No, of course, this was fantastic. I know it was useful for a, a lot of folks here. It was really cool to just to see exactly how you went about it, the before and after. I think it's fantastic that you were willing to share that. I know folks got a lot out of it.